want to get into. We're ready to get started. Um, I don't see too many new faces here from last time, so some of the slides are the same. They have been updated with more recent numbers, but some of the stuff I'll be going through rather quickly, but if you want me to slow down and you have any questions, feel free anytime because, like I said, some of these slides are repetitive, but um, we're still going to go through them and I'll just kind of gloss over them really quickly unless somebody has questions and would like to cover it more in depth. Okay, to start off with for the, for the agenda tonight, um, we'll be going over the budget schedule, um, the dates that we've already crossed and what's coming up for us to do with the budget, as well as the 17 to 18 budget to actual results as well as where we're trending at in the current year for revenue and expenses. Um, I have some historical data to go over with you all. And then I've also thrown in some V3 Academy um, compared to the IU's version of the online classes to compare. And then I've also um, the 19 to 20 next steps into budget discussion and where we're moving. Okay, so as you can see on this slide, we have completed two of the steps. Um, and then coming up in May, we will approve the proposed final budget for display. And in June, the board will adopt the final budget. So those are the two dates that we have um, coming forward. The 17 to 18 budget to actual, as you can see over in, in the third column is the actual, and then there's the variance between the budget and the actual in the fourth column. Um, the revenue came in over what was budgeted and the expenses came in under what was budgeted, which is a nice combination. I had those highlighted in yellow for you there. And what does that mean in terms of our general fund ending fund balance for the years? As you can see from 16 to 17 to where we ended in 17 to 18, there was an increase in the general fund ending fund balance. And just underneath that, you can see um, in my writing, in the smaller font, it says $500,000 of that 4.9 million is in our health care reserve. The proprietary fund, which is a food service fund, has a due to general fund of $909,693. Um, before I had posted up here the net position, so um, this is different this time, but it is what is owed to the general fund um, or has been used by the general fund. Um, and this is in the budget, we've included $290,000 in this year's budget to sort of go over and start decreasing that amount. And then also in next year's preliminary budget, I had included another $290,000 to start tackling that. And then this is where we're at currently. So as you can see in the first three columns of numbers is the 17 to 18 year. And the over beside that is the 18 to 19 year. And as you can see, I don't want to step away. I, sorry, I can't read it on that side. <laughs> I don't want to step away from the microphone. But um, the revenues for 17 to 18 last year, we were at 73.18% at the end of January. At the end of this January in 2019, we're at 78%. So we are trending slightly ahead on our revenues. And then for expenses, as you can see, last year we were at 47% and this year we're at 50%. So we are also trending slightly ahead in our expenses this year. Um, and one of the things I want to highlight is the healthcare, which is our, in our benefits line of the 200s. Going across there, you can see that that is one of the um, areas where we are ahead this year for expenses and our healthcare costs are up for the year. Okay, moving on to what impacts our revenue. Um, one of the items is obviously local taxes and our 17 to 18 mil rate was 13.1174 and 18 to 19, so for this current year, there was an increase to up to 13.5109. Um, our adjusted index rate for this year's budget that we are currently working on is 2.8%. And here is the comparison of the Ludden County 18 to 19 millage rates. And as you can see, Northern Ludden is the lowest millage rate in the county. And even if we went the whole adjusted index rate of 2.8%, um, that would raise us to 13.8892. We would still be the lowest in the county against this year's millage rates. On 
this slide um, is, you can see the average home value in the Northern Lebanon School District as of December was $175,544. And what I'm showing you here is um, the different millage rates. So there's the 0%, the 2%, the 2.5%, and, and then the adjusted index of the 2.8%. What that would do in additional tax revenue for our budget for 1920 is in this column right here. In blue. And then it also shows you the real estate taxes for the average homeowner at that 175, 544 house price, home assessment value, sorry. And then you can see in yellow what each of those different tax increases would mean to them in terms of their taxes. So the 2.8% millage rate increase for an average homeowner in the Northern Lemon School District is $66 per year. Okay. And I updated some of our learner information and that's the Local Economic Revitalization Tax Assistance, which we call ALERTA. And that program is reduced taxes over 10 years on the improvements. A lot of times um, I hear somebody say, oh, they're not paying taxes at all. No, they're still paying the same amount of taxes on the land. What the reduction in taxes on is the actual improvements. And um, these are the tax revenue at the 18 to 19 millage rates each year for the learners that are coming into play. So they get uh, the first year it's 10%, 20%, 30%, and their taxes slowly go up until it's at 100%. So those are what's coming into play each year for the LARDAs. And a large portion of our revenue is also, aside from local taxes, is our state subsidy of basic education funding. And what goes into play for that is all these, and I've gone over this numerous times, so if anyone wants me to in further detail, we can. But um, it takes your amount of students, the poverty weights in your school district, the medium household income, and then also your local, cap, local effort capacity index, um, which is how much per household are you contributing, or how much effort is the local economy putting in with real estate taxes to the school district. And then last time there were some questions on the median household income. So I just kind of put that up there where we're at. As you can see, Northern Lebanon School District is in blue going across for the last two years. It was 16, 17 data. And then at the bottom, so those are all the Lebanon County schools. At the bottom you can see the state median, which is what they use to base the weighting, the weighting off of in the basic ed funding formula. Okay, and we've all seen this slide a lot. We know it's the PISA's contribution rates. This is an expense we don't really have much control over. It comes in and we pay this um, for each employee and you can see the rates that are going up there. Health insurance costs, as I had said, our health insurance is up for the year. As you can see in 17 to 8, 17, 18 year, it was 2.3 million for the total year. We are at 2.5 million already for this year. So that's just something to keep in the back of your head that yes, our healthcare costs are up. We will probably be hitting some of the limits and we do get, we have stop loss insurance on that so we'll be getting some of that refunded back to us. Um, but like I said, it'll continue to go up for the rest of the school year as well. Yes, and that's when um, we were fully insured with Capital Blue Cross, and then we were self-insured with Capital Blue Cross, and then we have new rates with um, self-insured with Highmark. So you can see where we've, we've gone down there with Highmark. Yes, but we'll probably end up more similar to what 16, 17 for the year. The vehicle replacement schedule, um, this was worked on by Mason and his staff. And um, I had gone on this before that we got two new student vans, which is pretty awesome because those vans were like 1980s. And now they are driving around in nice new vans for the students. And um, one of the things that they have said they needed is a new lift truck. Um, if you guys remember, like last year we had ours break down and we didn't replace that. So that is included in the budget for next year to replace that. They're going to trade in one that they're currently, um, it doesn't have the weight requirement that they would like on the lift to go up and down to lift up pallets. 
So they would like to trade that in and get another one, and that's the $45,000 one, because the one that we have, like I said, is just not suitable for what we even need. So that is already in Mason's budget. He's worked some things around um, to be able to afford that within his budget for next year. And here are the charter school tuition rates for the Northern London School District. As you can see, for 1819, um, non-special education is the 11,000. Special education is the 23,410. Um, if you look down below, I kind of have the 1819 year to date as of end of January. And as you can see, we're running high on this as well this year. So last year we had a total of 613,000, and this year we're at 595,000 almost already. Um, we had a large influx of students into charter schools. Um, as you can see last year, um, fall, 17, fall 2017, we're at 44. This year for fall 2018, we ended around 70. It fluctuates greatly, this number, but it has increased. Okay, now this is the estimated cost for Northern London School District V3 Academy. And this number, because we have students fluctuating in and out of this program as well, it's kind of hard to get a constant hard cost for it. But um, there you can see they are with a total cost of about $230,267 per year. Um, and I think the average for that was between 25 to 30 students in it. And then there's different options for the Lebanon Lancaster Virtual Solutions Academy. Um, as you can see here, they vary between 40, approximately about $4,200 per year, um, all the way down to the $1,722 per year, depending on whether we're using their teachers, our teachers, their equipment and technology support, or we supply, the district supplies their own technology and support. Well, I mean, there's six different options there, so I kind of wanted to present those to you and we can kind of narrow it down from there. Um, we would obviously, that is going to vary greatly depending on which direction we move regarding our teachers, their teachers, and um, even the Northern London School District teacher, that's going to vary per student depending on what we negotiate and pay our teachers for that. Um, as you're well aware, the V3 MOU um, runs out at the end of the school year. No, I mean, the other one compared used, I think it was 25 students, is that correct? So, I mean, if you went down here and somehow or another we were able to completely move towards going with their teachers, their program, their everything, I mean, at the top, you could multiply that by that for a year. Does that get it close? Yeah, I mean, it would probably, it would likely be a hybrid of those options because, like, we have...
all of the support for anything that goes wrong with that. Thing. Now, when we talked about, so I think we, Felita and I talked about it, that's probably the better option to, to use their equipment because she doesn't have access to the, to the platform that they use. Like if we use our equipment, she's going to have to get access to whatever platform. She doesn't have to do it. We just don't know that they give that. Like we have to provide that support then, or our tech department would support. Like the help desk kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Thank you. Sorry. So don't oh. have no. Right now we have 37. That number fluctuates week to week, I would say. Yeah. It's, it's very fluid. discuss the MOU. Right. But I'm saying that just to give no right. that would come out to 157,000 a year compared to I think the other one is two third right now we're paying two hundred and thirty one thousand a year to be free. Okay. And I understand it can be But that includes it includes Kalita who would still need to be used some for the L L V S. district who are doing this in addition to their regular full day like they do it outside of outside. they do it outside of their work and then they submit time sheets for the time that they spend I guess what I'm looking at is that initial slide you got the cost and then that one there the 203 that would be if we went with the Pittsburgh company whatever that would be limited this would be I can tell you when we've when I've looked at those numbers, I don't I don't know that you're gonna see a huge cost savings. When we looked at it in the spring last year, they were pretty equal. Like they were pretty and it's it's really hard to get 
by, like this was really just a snapshot because when we look at the numbers, it fluctuates so much that in any given day, you know, because kids, you know, they'll have, they might have one course online, you know, you have kids that are part-time in B3, and then you have kids that are full-time in, B, in a B3. So, and those, those part-time numbers are ever-changing. Like, they literally can change every two weeks, you know, like, even every week, you know, like, there's kids in and out, or they drop an ad. If you, when you go to LLBS, they, there's like a, you know, they have a drop, you get charged by when they're, I think it's like a quarter, I think, you know, so, so like you get your kids enrolled and you pay at the quarter. So there's, you know, they talk to us a lot about how that payment, you know, and how you enroll kids so that you're not getting charged. You know, like if you enroll your kids in LLBS for the entire year, and the kid drops out at, after the first quarter, you get to charge for that. So you know, there's there's some more work involved in that sense because you're enrolling them each quarter to keep your payments lower. If that makes sense. What is the average cost per student for outside cyber school? What do you mean, like a charter school? Like a charter school. What are, what is our average paying out to the charter school right now? I mean, the tuition rate for the year is eleven thousand two hundred sixty. Okay. That's so what I mean. We also could also have. to uh, 1920 budget um, our next steps um, obviously our goal has been a balanced budget up here I just highlighted our preliminary budget to show the revenue um, with a 2.8 cent or a 2.8 percent millage rate increase um, and the difference between the revenue and the expenses is that negative 1.8 million there um, Backing out the cafeteria fund transfer of 290000 and the budgetary reserve of 300000 it brings us down to the $1.3 million that you see there in the bottom circled in yellow. And moving so on, you're so take, keep, you're taking those out? You're not transferring them back? You're writing off the debt? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. You're taking out the two ninety from last year and the, the three hundred for the next year? I'm pulling it out on this slide to show the $1.3 million. Um, because those are definitely one-time expenses. Um, the budgetary reserve we don't always use, and the cafeteria fund transfer I'm backing out because it's a one-time county entry. In the committee meetings, you had said that all this stuff had been paid. It's just a debt that was owed to the from the cafeteria fund. Okay, it's not a debt to the general fund, or it was a loan to the from the cafe, from the general fund to the cafeteria fund. But the auditors last time said that we could write that off. Why not just write that off and not have to pay that back because it's already taken care of? It's not a debt. It's not being paid back. What we are doing up here is actually what the auditors have recommended for us to do. It's When you look at the um, net position sheet in the audit report, there is a um, number that says due to other funds, what we're doing, that due to other funds line item is negative. And what we're trying to do is bring that up to the positive. And by doing that, you need to, it's due to other funds, so it needs to be there or, we say write off, meaning we're trying to get rid of that negative number. And the way to do that is to bring the money over from the general fund. I'm only backing out in this exercise to show you the 1.3 is like our operating expenses that are not being currently covered by revenue. Right, but you're saying we still have to put in 
590,000 if we keep those in there. I'm not, sh I'm unclear on what you're saying or what, or what you're asking me. If the auditors said that when the question was asked last month, if they, if we could instead of paying it back, just write it off, um, why are we continuing down the path of trying to pay it back? Because that's almost $600,000 that we wouldn't have to put money into the school for just to sit and fill a line item. You can by all means leave that negative due to other funds continue there. Our auditors have recommend, you're using terms, write it off, pay it back. Mm -hmm. It's due to other funds, it's an inner fund transfer is what it actually is. And I think when you're using those terms and when the auditors use those terms if they did, we're all talking about doing the same thing. We're bringing that negative up to a positive. Um, when you say just write it off, I'm not sure what, I mean, what we're doing is writing it off. Um, that's not really the correct term. It's an inner fund transfer. If you're writing something off, you need to have a counter journal entry somewhere. And that is what this would be. Gotcha, because from what it sounded like they explained um, last month was the auditors seem to explain that a lot of schools do that where they'll fund the cafeteria fund from the general fund. Um, and that's what we are doing and now we need to do the accounting journal entries to represent that action. So is this actual $600,000 of incoming money that we're just marking off and just setting aside and doing nothing with? So is this revenue money coming in that's just not going to be used? Or is this just, we're just writing numbers on paper? No, it's, it's not, it's an expense. It's showing as an expense in the general fund. It's already actually been an expense over the proprietary fund, the food service fund, and we're doing the inner fund transfer. It's a, it's a accounting entry. Um, I'm not taking any actual cash and putting it anywhere or doing anything like that. It is an inner fund transfer. It is an accounting journal entry that is going to be done to have the money owed to other funds be brought out of the negative. So we're, we're not paying $600,000 now to build that fund up. That's not really money coming in. That's what you're saying for those two lines. I'm not saying anything like what you are. I'm not really quite sure what you're saying. What I'm saying is it's an inner fund transfer. It is showing as a negative in the cafeteria fund. And what we're trying to do is the appropriate accounting journal entries that are recommended by our, our auditors to bring that up to a positive. And the inner fund transfer is going to be reflected as a decrease in ending fund balance in the general fund. I Thank guess. you, Mrs. Martin. She's So if we could just go back up there, I'm showing that the differences in revenues and expenses is the 1.8. Backing out those two things brings us down to the 1.3. And what I just wanted to highlight that number because as we move forward, on here you can see is in the preliminary budget expenses. Now things have changed since this. We're still working on them and we're working on getting towards our final budget. But in the preliminary budget fund, if you're looking at the expenses broken down, um, you can see that the salary and benefits is up top. And that is can't read it, I'm sorry, 28 million. And going down to the other sections, um, it, next to special ed without salary and benefits, the highest is 2.4. Um, we go down through all these things and I'm showing you them all broken out um, just to show that the largest portion of where we can get um, the money that we did cut the expenses is in your salary and benefits. And that is shown in this graph and the graph on the next page is just showing you how large of a portion of our Budgeted expenses are in salary and benefits. Okay. Moving on to the next steps, as I had said last time, obviously um, we're looking to invest and we had a cash flow analysis done um, 
we're working with PFM on that and moving forward. Um, a tax increase, like I said, we could go up to possibly a 2.8% is our adjusted index. We continually look at grants. Um, and then also I have on the next slide um, the proposed state funding. That's why we can hop ahead to that. Thanks, Brad. So the governor's proposed um, basic ed funding had an increase in it for our district of 297000 So what I did was I put together this slide and I'm showing you at the different tax increase rates along with the governor's proposed basic ed funding. Um, we're not sure how it's going to land out yet. They have, a, like I said, the spreadsheet was an increase of 297000 for us. However, they need to, they take into all those different weighted categories that I told you, our poverty, our student, and they do that to all the schools. And basically there's a bucket and they look at all those different weighted items and then they just divvy the money up based on those. And those items are still changing. The data is still changing um, as it comes in and they're finalizing that. So while I'm, I have in here the governor's proposed, which it's not approved yet, budget, um, and then all those data things that are still moving is going to be an additional $297,000 for our district next year. Um, like I said, there's still a big if. But anyway, that's what's in this, and I'm showing it here with a 2% increase, a 2.5% increase, and a 2.8% increase. And you can see what the different, those different items do um, for the, the ending fund balance there. Or for, I'm sorry, this is just showing the difference between the two. And again, this is the preliminary budget expenses. We're working on finalizing the expenses and getting a bigger picture, but there's still a lot of um, moving items in that as well, working with administrations to final up their budget and also some personnel discussions that we're doing. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what the different revenues do at the different tax rates with the governor's proposed basic ed funding as well. And again, on this page, I backed out the cafeteria fund and the budgetary reserve just to kind of show where we're at and the operating expenses that can um, be cut. That's okay. That is straight your revenue and your expenses, the, the variance between the two. That is the red line is your expenses are exceeding your revenue by that much. And that's, we've given you some of those options and personnel that was it, to discuss, and we'll make some decisions on that. Um, I know we've had some administrate, like when we got the budgets coming in from administrators and buildings and grounds, we have some cuts there that we can put in. So all those will be reflected, and hopefully once we have some decisions, I can solidify it up and get um, what we're proposing for the final budget. So the red, that red number was a 2.0 increase. The red number no, this is not the ending fund balance. This is just how much deficit from last year. Right, it's how much your expenses are exceeding. Well, this is the preliminary budget for this year. These numbers are all this year. It's how your expenses are exceeding your revenues. So last year, what was that like? I believe it was 1.2 off the top of my head, but so we spent 1 .2, 1 .1. that was what was budgeted. But remember, we came in much better than budget for both. So yes. So so what I'm, that's what I just so that red number doesn't depend on fund. That, that's just what we had budgeted for 2018, 2019. That's what you're saying. This year. Oh no, sorry, I'm scrolling down. Yeah, this is the 1920 budget. So this is next year's. This is the budget that we're working on now that, that the board will need to approve in May and June. Um, this is how your expenses are exceeding your revenues for this budget that we're working on now for next school year. So basically that. Correct. So basically that. Right. But that. Any of those red numbers would dip into the end of fund by that much. Correct. Okay. Yep. And then, well. Your so, ending fund's at 4.9, so. And then those numbers, those ones that include, that's the bare bones budget, right? That doesn't include, like, if, if a wish list wants to add two right. staff or whatever. whatever. 
seven different personnel positions. Like we have an AD to talk about. This is as is the preliminary budget, but if you recall, the preliminary budget did have a full-time athletic director position budgeted in it. Okay. So this would just basically be the status quo for what we have this year. Next year right? No new add-on. Right. Yeah. So we don't have to save anything with the AD. We still have right. Because that was in the budget. Right. The budget. Yeah. But there's other things, right? So. Like the transportation costs. Like that's up to the mm -hmm. that's up Right, because we don't know what it's going to be. We don't know if it's going to come in less, or if it's going to come in more, or if it's going to be coming in the same. So. Okay. I'm sorry, nobody freak out. That's not the ending fund balance. Okay. Yep. So with the transportation out to bid, did you just use like this year's budget number to put as a placeholder as what you're expecting to spend next year? Correct. Oh, yeah, I included a cost for transportation. Yes. show with the slide is this is not the way we should the district should be continuing to be spending more than their revenue at this point would that be, would that be this went as is how many years in a row has this been happening a while or um last year's, last year's budget had a deficit on it um, this year's does, and then, Brad just had a really good point to, to make. The deficit has been coming down over the years. So one good thing is we're not decreasing that. We are chipping away at it. So this year's budget, it was less. And obviously, with these numbers, it's, it's coming down. So. OK? What was last year's deficit? I think it was around 1.2, but sorry. There is one thing I wanted to clarify and bring up from last month's public input. Steve, could you pass out the papers? I just I just wanted to clarify. I think there was some confusion said during public input. Yes, please, everybody. I have 25 copies, so we'll see if I'm going to get. These are so tiny. Okay. I'm hoping Sorry. to provide some clarity here okay. because um, during public input at the January 15th meeting, um, it was said that the ending fund balance at the committee meeting was stated at $1.4 million. The handout today says it is only going to be $634,000. There is a huge chunk that is lost in a week based on your budget. I just wanted to provide clarity on this. 
So what I passed out here is a copy of those two handouts that were referenced in that comment. Um, the first on the top half is the PDE 2028, which was handed out at the committee meeting. The, below, the bottom one is the handout that was given out at the January 15th meeting. Both of these numbers represent the numbers for the preliminary budget. Um, and both of these numbers are the same. The top has the committed fund balance of $500,000, as you can see. Then the unassigned balance of $634,000. If you go down to the bottom one that was handed out at the voting meeting, you can see those numbers are the same there as well, clearly marked with the same description. If you go up to the top, um, it's adding those up and it comes to the $1.1 million again. If you go down to the bottom sheet, the same numbers there as well. That is the total committed, assigned, and unassigned fund balance is $1.134 million on both sheets. On the top on the state form, the state then backs out the budgetary reserve of $300,000 out of the expense side of the budget. And that's where you can see it says total estimated ending, committed, assigned, and unassigned fund balance and budgetary reserve is the 1.4 million. Both sheets are clearly marked and labeled with the same numbers. Stating that the board had a huge chunk of money that was lost in a week was an inaccurate statement and I just wanted to provide clarity on that. I would like to provide a brief recess before we start the meeting in 10 minutes, so thank you for coming tonight. <laughs>